those that will be joining us on live feed, Father. I pray that you'll minister in their lives. Move into their homes today, Father. And I praise you for all that you've done. Touch the singing and the preaching of your word, discipleship kids, our Ignite student ministries, our nursery, our Sunday school classes, Father. I'm praying that you will touch, move, and minister in a mighty way. Father, as we're ending out this 2018, we're looking ahead to 2019, Father. I'm praying for an abundant reign of your Holy Spirit upon our services, upon our church families, upon our lives, Father. I praise you for what I know that you're going to do and praise you for all that you've already done. In Jesus' precious, holy, and righteous name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Would you give God a great hand clap of praise? This is the last Sunday morning service of 2018. Let's worship God like it could be our last Sunday morning service. Amen. Let's worship God today. Amen.
Aren't you glad that we're in the glory land way? Amen. Glory be to God. And oh, what a happy day that's going to be when Christ Jesus we get to see. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Your ushers are coming this morning to receive your tithes and your offering. Give and worship to God. God is certainly worthy of praise, of honor, and of glory. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you again today, we want to thank you. And we want to praise you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for one more opportunity that you've allowed us to come to worship, praise, and magnify you. Father, this morning as we place our tithes and our offering under these offering plates, we ask you to let it go forth for the building and the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Multiply it to meet the need. Your son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you this morning. Amen.
do. I may not please you, and sometimes I may not please God, but he forgives and forgets, and I have made up my mind that I am going to worship and serve God, no matter what it might cost me, because I can't afford to lose. I can't afford to turn back. I am going to follow Jesus. As long as I have breath, I'm going to praise him, and I'm going to follow him, and I'm going to do the best I can to do what I know he wants me to do. Sing these two songs with us. I haven't changed my mind, and if you don't know that, old convention books. Just listen the first time and the second time you can sing it. I haven't changed my mind about serving my Lord. No matter what it might cost me to lose I can't afford. I know that I can rely
a moment and let's just lift up our hands this morning. Take a moment and just lift up your hands and worship Him today. Just take a moment and thank Him. Start off by thanking Him for all that He's done for you in your lives. Thank a mo- take a moment and thank Him. I know that there's been a lot of things that's happened in 2018, but you know what? I get to take a moment and I get to thank Him because I'm still here. I still have a, I still have the breath to praise and worship Him. I still have a chance to praise and worship my Savior. I still have an opportunity to worship Him. Take a moment and worship Him today. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As long as I've got breath, I will praise you, Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And amen. Would you give God another hand clap of praise this morning as you're being seated? Glory be to God. Amen. And amen. Our discipleship kids is going out the door to my right hand, your left hand side. They'll be going out and coming back the same door. 
So in other words, parents, don't leave your kids here because I'll put them to work vacuuming the floor and mopping and not getting in trouble. 2018 is coming to a close. I remember standing here at the ending of 2017 getting ready to move into 2018 and it doesn't seem like it's been that long ago. Time is going fast. I wonder why time didn't move that fast when I was in second period in the 10th grade sitting in the English class and I wanted to get out of there. Why didn't time move this fast then? But it seemed like it always moved fast at lunchtime. I never had enough time to eat four plates. I don't understand. But anyways... If you have your Bibles, if you will, go ahead and turn with us to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verses 15 and 16 this, this morning. Over 2018, there's been a lot of sermons preached. I preach on average of 12 to 13 sermons each, each month. Doesn't seem like it's that many, but it seems like it's more than that at different times. And over those, over the courses of those Sundays, Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and and Wednesday nights, there's a lot of topics that we've covered in 2018. Some of those topics have been prayer. Some of those topics have been fasting. Some of those topics have been unity. There's been different avenues of the topics that we have looked at, and I believe that God has got a divine purpose and a divine reasoning for every sermon that has been preached. Amen? I believe that God's got a divine purpose and a divine reasoning for every Sunday school class that was, the, the lessons that was taught, every Bible study that has been taught, each guest that has come in and preached, I believe that everything has been a divine order by God and for a general purpose for the building of the church, amen? Edification of the church body is the primary function of what, the, of what God wants for these types of visits, these types of gathering is the edification and encouragement of the church body. We looked on Wednesday evening, and we talked this past Wednesday evening for those that was, was not here. Those that were here, don't give away the secrets. Go ahead and get... <laughs> we have, on average, each week, seven to eight hours that we're here in this building. You've got Sunday school, Sunday morning, and Sunday night services, and Wednesday night services. This is not counting extra services or anything like that. We're here between that wall, that wall, that wall, and that wall. We're here approximately seven to eight hours. What does that mean? That means the rest of the time you're outside these four walls. So we're only the church seven hours out of the week. No. 10,080 hours is what consists of our week. That means 3% of your time is spent in these four walls sitting on those pews. 3%. That means that we've got 97% of our time is spent sleeping, eating, hallelujah, not the only eater. Sleeping, eating, working, and being the church outside these four walls. Amen? We all have a purpose for, that God has us for, for being the church outside. You're going to see people that I will never see. You're going to reach people I'll never reach. And guess what? I will reach people you'll never see and you'll never reach. Amen? Studies have shown that people 
come to church when the pastor, when they know the pastor or the pastor invites them only seven, and that's very generous, seven percent of the time. But they come when people in the church invite them 83 to 85 percent of the time. So who do you think has a greater chance of getting somebody into the house of God? The pastor or the church? The church. But guess what? Before anybody before anybody throws anything at me, not only am I the pastor, but guess what? I'm also part of the church. Come on now. I'm a member here just like you are. I'm an attender here just like you are. I'm a giver here just like you are. Come on. There's not a, I'm a prayer. I am praying for this church just like I hope you are. I'm a worker in the church just like you are. Come on. Too many times. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking off any responsibility that I do because I think that I do just a little bit. I believe that everybody that comes into the house of God has got a primary function of getting souls into the house of God. Amen? Every one of us, from me all the way back to the sound booth, we've all got that function. We all have that responsibility. Now, I have talked to, over the, over the last month, whether some realized it or not, I have talked to several in this congregation. Some of you have no clue that I was trying to inquire and, and retrieve information. But I did anyway. Some of you did not realize that I was planting a seed into your mind. And the reason I know that I have planted a seed, that God has watered that seed, is some has come back and has brought me the exact same thing that I planted into lives. And I just grin and say, God, thank you for watering it. Every department within this church, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, I have talked to many within every department and said, we've got to do something to grow the body. Hello? But we need to understand something. Growth is important. Growth is important. Hello? Growth is important. Do you know that when a child is born, if there is, that they, they've got a chart. They showed us when Katie was born, and, and every time we would walk into that pediatrician's office, they've got a chart and an outline that shows us the growth that Katie had every time she would grow, every time we'd go. We would go, and they would measure her head. They'd measure her height from here to her toes. They'd, they'd, they'd weigh her and record it. Everything about her, they measured her from top to bottom. Everything about her, and they recorded it. And every time we would go, they would say, Oh, she's in the such and such percentile of her growth. Now, as we went on, there was a time that she was in the, she was still in the good, in the normal, normal growth, but she was in the lower third. They said, she got to eat more. I said, let me send her home with you. I mean, come, every parent in here has said, amen. We had cheese pizza every time. Come on. Ain't that right, Miss Bethel? Come on now. She'd tear it up. So if you get those fruit and vegetables and stuff, now she likes them now, you know, but, you know, you get them. We'd find green beans under the table. I, 
And then I told her, I said, now everything that you think you're doing to get away with, I did it better than you. But church growth, we need church growth. Amen? Church growth is good. Whoa, hang on, hang on. This thing is jumping. Church growth is a good thing and is very much needed. Church growth, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. You're going to hear this in just a second. But church growth can be hindered just like a baby, just like a child, just like you and I. There are certain things that hinders growth, right? There are certain aspects of our health that hinders growth. That's the same way it is within the church. Nobody said amen. Church growth is good and very much needed. We like growth, amen, in numbers such as attendance and financial. However, I'm not wanting growth in those areas more than I want growth in the spiritual. Hello? I've had pastors to tell me, it's going to be a little different this morning, I've had pastors to tell me that they enjoy pastoring four and five hundred member churches. But then I go to ask them, do you know so-and-so that goes to your church? No, I don't think I do. Ain't nothing wrong with a big church. Ain't a thing wrong with them. When you get a larger church, you get over two or three hundred people, they, ha they splinter off into certain groups and they have, hey, they keep up with everybody. I ain't knocking it. My personality is I like to know everybody. I like to shake everybody's hands. I like to hug everybody's neck. Could y'all imagine the line leaving if we had 500 people? I'm locking the door. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I realize we get to that point. I'm going to have to back off <laughs> Here's the, here's the thing that I want us to understand. As growth comes, there's got to be changes. I don't wear the same shoes that I wore when I was five. I wear the same shoes I wore when I was seven, but not my kid. I'm kidding. When you grow, there are changes that occur. When you grow, there are changes that occur. Are y'all hearing me? All right. Sometimes you got a little bit of, get a little bit bigger jacket, a little bit bigger around in the waist when the pants shrink. When growth occurs, change has to happen. You cannot wear the same suit. I can't wear the same suit that I wore when I was five years old. Boy, that sure would look awful funny. That would look very comical. What does all this mean? When we grow, and we grow slowly, but we grow in God, and we dig a little deeper in the Word, when we dig a little deeper in prayer, when we dig a little deeper in fasting, when we dig a little deeper in reading and study time, we're going to grow deeper and higher in God. Amen? That's the growth that I'm looking for. Amen? There ain't a thing wrong with more people sitting on the pews. We've grown. This church has grown over the last three and a half years. I look back at the numbers when we came here, and I look to the numbers today. We've grown. And one thing that's, that's been very prevalent that I've seen is any time any, any, a family left, God's always added in. Growth still occurs. And I thank God for that growth. However, I want spiritual growth. Brother Andy, are you saying we're not growing spiritually? No, I didn't say that. 
I didn't say that at all because I believe that there has been a lot of spiritual growth within our church. I believe that God has taken us into greater heights, and I believe that God has taken us into deeper depths in His Word. I can see, I can feel, and I can sense a change in some of the teaching, in some of the preaching, Sunday school class teachings. I see a difference, and in the students, I see changes. But does that mean that we're where we need, where we're going to end up? Nope means we still got growth to go. Growth is needed. Growth is good. But you also need help. If I ate the same portions, if I ate the same portions that I ate when I was five years old, I would not be healthy. I would be malnourished, I'd be dehydrated, they'd need to put me in a hospital and have an IV dripping. Are you with me? Why? Because I'm... <clears throat> I'm a bigger boy now than I once was. As a Christian... As we grow in God and we get deeper depths and we grow spiritually, that means we need more of God in our lives. I cannot eat the same portion. I'm talking spiritually now. Come on. I know it's comical about my eating habits now versus then. However, our spirit spiritual intake needs to change it needs to get greater it needs to get more of God in it what does that mean that might mean for some less TV time I figured I better bring this one in now because everybody gets all the light. I mean, the New Year's resolutions out in January, just a couple of days, and then they always last about a month. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in now to, to, to tailor some New Year's resolutions. Everybody always throws New Year's re Brother Andy, you ain't read Scripture yet. I'm getting there. I promise we will. Everybody always gets New Year's resolutions in. I'm going to eat healthier. How long does that really last? An hour. <laughs> Until I see the kitchen. I'm going to join the gym. I might. He's going to the gym. I think he's exercising enough for me and him both. <laughs> I've heard people say, I, January, I'm losing weight. I know a particular person, this is several years ago, nobody in here, don't look around. They had 14 different uh, <laughs> diet programs in a whole year. I don't know how much they gained. I'm at loss. Now, I'm not making fun of anybody that's got any New Year's resolutions that you're laying out. But how about this look at some spiritual changes to be made? Everybody's always looking at the physical things. I'm going to save money this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start putting money back in a savings account. Well, that only works until something drastic happens, right? I'm going to lose weight. Well, that only works until we find the chocolate cake. I'm going to join the gym. That only, that only takes a hold until we don't like getting up so early in the morning to go to the gym before we come back home to get a shower to get ready to go to work. Or after work, I'm too tired, I'm not going by the gym today. Then all of a sudden, we've lost the habit. There, well, we're getting to somewhere. 
How about starting now and say, my New Year's resolution that I'm going to hold on to is reading more. My New Year's resolution is kind of going to be, I'm going to be praying more. My New Year's resolution is I'm going to fast. Oh, see, there, that'll help with the, the fasting more. That'll help with some of the other. My New Year's resolution is I'm going to study more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to fast more. I'm going to read more. Those are, things, those are great changes that will help get us spiritually healthier. And let's look. Ephesians. Take a look this morning at Ephesians chapter 4. Starting in verse 15. Ephesians 4 and verse 15. Look at what it says. Rather speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up. Some Christians need to grow up. I'll say amen. We are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint wherewith which is it is equipped. When each part is working properly, that makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now look at verse 16. The whole body joined and held together by the joints which with which it is equipped. Let's look at that for just a second. The whole body, I know, I know that we can look at this in the physical. If my hand is not working properly and I cannot use it, it makes life difficult. Amen? You don't believe me? Take a hammer, give it to your wife or husband, let them hit your hand. And see what happens. Give it to your neighbor and let them hit your hand and see what happens. If your hand does not work properly, you've got problems. Think about it. If you're normally right-handed and you use your right hand to pick up your cup, and now you don't have it, you've got to train your left hand to do it. Right? Try to put your shoes on and tie them with one hand. It's hard. If your leg is not working properly, if your back is not working properly, if your eyes are not working properly, Amen. things start to happen. Now let's think about this. As a church body, we have different members of the body. Right? You can take a look around and you can see the different members of the body. When one hurts, one's going through a problem, one's got an issue, we all are part of that or should be. Why? Why? Because we need to hold each other up in prayer. Hello? Well, I didn't want to bother anybody. I could tell you that half of y'all have told me that. And I understand it and I get it. However, however, we as the body like to pray one for another. We like to hold one another up. We should, hello, hold one another up in prayer. When one hurts, we all hurt. We may not know the same pain, right? But we hurt. We may not face the same issues, 
We may have faced the same things. We're not going to hurt the same. But we can hold one another up in prayer. Now you break it down even further, or you build it up for going from individuals, and you build it up into, into different departments. We've got the women's discipleship. We've got Ignite Student Ministries. We've got Discipleship Kids. We've got greeters. We've got ushers. We've got the nursery. We've got the praise team. So on and so on. We've got the Sister Sarah. Joe, I keep renaming y'all. I keep saying something else. We got the joyful hearts. So on and so on. And look, all of those areas of ministry can, can lean on one another. They can build on one another. The praise team, everybody don't sing bass. And they don't let me sing at all. Amen. Everybody don't play the piano. Everybody has a different part. Right? But it all equals together and makes beautiful music. Right? And guess what? That's the same way with the body. We all do not work in children's church. We all do not show up at the Ignite Student Ministries bonfires. Some do, and they run me off. But we all are, have got the same purpose. What is that? Carry the gospel. That needs to be the same purpose. We all, as the church body, we've got one mission. What is that? To see souls saved. Amen? If your purpose is here for any other reason, then we need to check that. We need to find out. We need to change it. Why? Because the purpose of the church is to see souls saved, to see lives changed. Amen? Now let's go on. We see that every, the whole body joined and held together, it is equipped. And when the body is working properly, in other words, when there is unity, my right hand cannot go opposite of my left hand. Boy, that would look awful funny, wouldn't it? If my right hand wanted to go out that door and my left hand wanted to jump out that window, I would be in a pickle, right? I didn't say eat a pickle. I said be a pickle. Be in a pickle. What does my body have to do? My hands, my feet, and my head has got to agree which direction I'm going, right? I can go forward or I can go backwards. I can't go both. It'd look awful funny. When every part is in unity, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up or gets healthy. Now let's look at this. Church health is the key to church growth. All living things grow if it's healthy. That there are hindrances to child growth. Child growth hindrances come in the form of poor nutrition, unsafe environment, so on and so on. If those hindrances are removed, growth is natural. If I had a flower and I put a five-gallon bucket over it, will it grow? No. Do you know why? Can light get to it? Jesus said, y'all better get this. Brother Andy, it ain't been shouting yet. I'm, hang on. If I put a five-gallon bucket over a flower, what is it not going to get? It's not going to get light. 
Jesus said he was the light of the world. Come on. Where does the light come from? The light comes from the sun, S-U-N. My spiritual light comes from the sun, S-O-N. What else does it not get? It, the, the, the flower does not get water. Why? Because there's a five-gallon bucket over it, hindering it from getting water. The Bible tells us that Jesus can give you water out of a well that never will run dry. The water that He shall give you You'll never thirst again. But I've got to be able to receive that in order to get a hold of that, right? If I remove the hindrances out of my life, then I'll start to grow. If your child, now think about this. If your child does not grow, you will do everything necessary to find the reason for the non-growth. And guess what? You're going to fix the problem. If they tell you, mamas, hello, Sister Amanda will tell you this one. If they tell you your child needs to go to a hospital that's outside of your normal driving range, what are you going to do? Well, I don't guess we'll go. Well, I, you know, I got, I got to, I, I, I can't go. I got to work. I got. You gonna take off of work? You gonna get in the automobile? And if you have to push the thing, you're going to where you need to go. Right? Why is it that Christians won't do what's necessary? Oh. Nobody got that one. You're gonna do what's necessary as a parent or a grandparent to find the reason for non-growth and you're going to fix the problem. This is the same with the church body. Why is it that there are some Christians that want to sit on the seat of do nothing and we want to do the same old, same old. We don't want to change, but you hadn't grown in a hundred years. But God says that He's the same yesterday, the same forever, today and forever. And since He doesn't change, we don't need to change. That is baloney. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I got to change my life if I want to grow in God. Hello? I've got to allow God to clean. Does anybody remember the cleaning out? Come on. Anybody remember us preaching on that? I'm not who I used to be, but I'm not who God wants me to be. I am still changing. I'm still moving. I'm still on the potter's wheel. I'm still allowing God to make the change in my life so that I can grow in Him. If you're the same Christian you was when on January 1, 2017, if you're the same Christian on January 1, 2018, you have wasted a year. Brother Andy, that was ugly, mean, and you hurt my feelings. We've got to grow in God. We've got to make a change in our lives if we want to get closer to God. Amen? When I got saved, I put away the old things. I allow God to bring the new things in. I don't, I don't need to turn back to the old ways. I need to continue on to the ways that God's got for me. Amen? I need to lay the old language down and pick up a new language. I need to lay the old attitude down and pick up a new attitude. I need to lay the old, the old way of thinking down and pick up a new way of thinking. But it don't stop. 
there. That's salvation. Salvation is not the end. It's just the beginning. Now we got sanctification. Oh, what a change in my life. Every mo- the song says, every moment I find him, he's just the same. People have asked me, where did God go? God didn't go nowhere. Where'd you leave him at? Well, you know, the other day I, I had to go somewhere and God didn't really need to go in there. Well, then why did you go in there? Come on. Well, you know, the other day I was watching that TV show and, you know, God really didn't need to hear that. Then why did you need to hear that? That's ugly, ain't it? Well, you know, I was reading this book and God really didn't need to read that. Then why was you reading that? Because I'm not God. Where's the holies of holies at? The holies of holies ain't behind this wall back here. The holies of holies is right here. Where does Jesus want to live? Where does the Holy Spirit live at? He lives within you. Where's the holies of holies at now? It's right here. Come on now. Now let's look at this. Let's go on a little further. Church is a body and it is alive. It must be healthy to grow. Healthy, lasting church growth is a process. Change does not happen overnight. You don't go from baby food to steak and potatoes in 24 hours. Now, pots probably you did, but there's exceptions. Oh, Jesus, help me. You have to grow into that, right? It is a process, and it is an ever-changing process in our lives. Healthy and lasting church growth is a process, a slow process, but it is a process. Now I want you to look at something. I want you to take a look at something here. Every church needs, there's five things every church needs to have growth. First of all, we need to grow Warmer through fellowship. I mean, those we like fellowship. Glory to God. Did you know that times of fellowship is not just so we can eat? Church fellowship is not just so that we can eat. Church fellowship is so that we can learn one another. I had somebody ask me, Brother Andy, why do we still do the Christmas cards? You know what the primary reason why I like to do the Christmas cards? We do them labels, and I have people call me, and they'll ask me, who is the, who is the Watts family? Well, this is where they sit at. Who is the Klein family? I don't know. Who's the leisure family? Who, who, who's this brother and sister Hodel? Who is this person? Who is that person? Guess what? That's getting to know one Another. How else do we need to grow? We need to grow deeper through discipleship. Church is not about just coming in and, and hearing a message so we can feel good. Hello? 
Church is about coming together with people of like faith and learning more about God, about His Word, and taking it, applying it into my life, and me walking out the doors and applying it into my life. Apply it to my life and apply it in my life. Discipleship is about going outside these four walls. Remember, 97% of your week is spent away from here. Ninety-seven percent. Wow. Church growth is growing stronger through worship. I may not know the song. I may not know the beat. I may not know how to sing. I may have been told not to sing. But we still grow stronger through worship. We come into the house of God. We lift up holy hands regardless who's singing. Hello? Regardless of whether we like the song or not, regardless of whether we know the song or not, we lift up holy hands. God, I'm here to worship you. I'm here to worship you. If all you're doing is saying, I'm here to worship you. Jesus, I'm here to worship you. Jesus, I'm here to honor you. Jesus, I'm here to adore you. Jesus, I'm here just to worship all that you have done for my life. I come to the house of God not to preach. I come to worship. The church needs to grow warmer through fellowship, deeper through discipleship, stronger through worship, broader through ministry. Do you know that once you start in ministry, your avenues is going to grow? Hey, Andy, what do you mean by that? Well, I told everybody in here, and y'all all all don't believe me, but I'm going to tell you again, I used to be shy. Used to be shy. Then they got me into being the backup drummer. First, first, first was I played the tambourine. Anybody remember that? The blue one, half circle. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all, that killed my hand. When my hand would start hurting, I started hurting my, I mean, hitting my leg. Then I was the backup drummer. Then I was the drummer. Then I started teaching a Sunday school, backup Sunday school teacher. Then I was teaching a Sunday school class. Then I was helping in children's church. Then I was teaching in children's church. I helped in the youth group. Then I had taught the youth group. I told somebody I taught every every Sunday school class in the church to include one church we was at. We had a men's Sunday school class and a women's Sunday school class. I taught the women's Sunday school class. I taught the men's. I taught the women's. I taught them all. The more we work in ministry, the more God is going to grow you and have a broader horizon in your ministry outreach. Do you know why? God says when you're faithful over the few things. People all the time talk about, I want want to do such and such in ministry. Brother Andy, how do I start that? Clean the toilets. Clean the toilets. I don't want to clean the toilets. Well, I don't either, but I do it anyway. Well, Andy, I don't know where the stuff's at to clean it. Get with me after church. I'll show you. 
I'll fall all that money. Brother Andy, you don't ever ask me to do such and such in ministry. You know what's got to be done in ministry. And that was that one for me. No, it wasn't. When we start on the few things, God will broaden our horizon. Last, God grows the body larger through evangelism. I opened this up and I told you it in the very beginning. I'm fixing to close right here. In the very beginning, I told you. People come to church 7% of the time because they know or was asked by the pastor. 7%. Twenty-three percent of the time, they come because they drove down the road and seen it. Fourteen percent of the time, because of a program or event in the church. Brother Andy, we got to be all about the programs. Fourteen percent of the time, people come because of the program within the church. So you mean to tell me we can't have a basketball go? We got a basketball go. You mean to tell me we can't have youth group? We got youth group, student ministry. You mean we can't have Sunday school? We got them. 14% of the time, people will come because of the program. 83 to 85% of the time, people come because a church member invited them. Why? Because that means you are sowing a seed of word into that church and you believe in it enough that you're going to invite somebody you know. Pastor's got to invite. That's where he's at. Hello? That's what that's Hey, this ain't me. This has been studies, and you know what? This study has been done every year for the last 15 to 20 years, and do you know every year the numbers do not change? They do this study all the time. Numbers have not changed. It's not because of the color of the carpet. It's because somebody invited them. Would you stand? Church growth is important. Church health, to me, is just as important, or more so. If you've got a health problem, you've got a stomach pain, what do you do? You go to the doctor. Your eyes ain't working right, what do you do? You go to the doctor. you got high cholesterol, what do you do? Ignore it. Uh -uh. Go to the doctor. You got sugar problems. What do you do? You go to the doctor. What does the doctor do? They listen to what you say. Now, y'all hear this just a second. They listen to what you say, and then they practice medicine. Think about it next time you go to the doctor. Or maybe you don't need to think about it. Let's try this medicine. Let's try this pill. Let's try this cough medicine. Let's try this cough medicine. Let's run these tests and try this. You can go to the pharmacist and ask them, how many times does prescriptions change during even a one week sickness they change we try this antibiotic well a couple of days it didn't work so we're going to try this one we try this cholesterol medicine and it don't work so let's try this one let's try this sugar medicine it didn't work so let's try this one but you know what we're all the time talking about the great physician. 
we're all the time talking about when I have an ailment in my body, I need to go to God, the great physician, and ask for a healing. Well, guess what? He does that for the spiritual as well. And he's not practicing medicine. He knows what's wrong. He has the right prescription to fix what's wrong in our lives. Brother Andy, are you, are you, are you saying all this, telling us that there's something wrong? Nope. This is, this is the best church that I've ever been at. This is, this is a church that's got some of the, the most loving people. 2018, we've seen a lot of heartache. Hello? I'm believing 2019 is the best yet to come. I believe 2019, I can grow deeper in the Word of God than I've ever been. I can grow higher in God than I've ever been. I can be stronger spiritually than I've ever been. And I'm looking for God to do some great and mighty works that we've ever seen. Brother Andy, are you looking after a sign? Nope. The Bible tells us it's a wicked and perverse generation that seeks after a sign. God's already sent us a sign, but guess what He also says? He says, signs will follow those that believe. I'm not looking, I'm believing that God's going to move. I'm not just looking for God, I'm believing God is going to move greater than He's ever do, moved before. I'm going to give you three words and we're fixing to pray. God has laid these three words on my heart for 2019. Pray. Excuse me. Prayer. Faith. Action. Your prayer doesn't work without faith. Hello? Your faith doesn't work without prayer. But when you pray and you've got faith and you put it into action, now God can work. Brother Andy, that ain't biblical. Stay tuned. It is biblical. I've got to pray, believe, and put my faith into action. I got faith that God's going to move in 2019. How about you? I've got faith that God's going to move in my life in 2019. How about you? I've got faith that God's going to move in this church in 2019 in a greater way than He's ever moved. How about you? Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you today, Father, we pray and we ask you right now that you would move and minister in a mighty way. God, I know that church growth is extremely important. But God, right now, I'm praying for the health of this body of believers. I'm praying for the spiritual health for this body of believers. God, I'm asking you to move in a mighty way. I'm asking you to open the windows of heaven and pour out an anointing and a blessing that can only come from you onto each one that's here under the sounding of my voice this morning. Father, I'm not looking at what once was, but I'm looking at what you're going to do because I know you're going to do a great and mighty work. I know that you've got great and mighty things in the storehouse for us that we do not know of and I got the faith that you're going to move. This morning, if you need anything from God, you need to be anointed and prayed for, would you come?
You just need God to move in your life for 2019.